Howdy partners, hope you're all feeling fresh and dandy. Today's video is inspired by a DM I got on Instagram. You know what it's like, you're scrolling through DMs and one just catches your eye. And it was someone asking me what level Jam had competed at before I bought her. And it made me suddenly realize that not everyone knows the story of Jam because I've never really done a proper video on it. I've just mentioned it in random videos and you know, maybe done the odd Instagram post about it. So I figured it's probably time to enlighten you all how this little baby bog pony has turned into my future badminton horse. Makes me so nervous talking about badminton ahead of the event because we all know how it went last time. However, I thought it'd be cool to kind of show you guys the journey of Jam and do some comparisons of what she was like as a baby at her first event to what she's like now and how we've kind of got to qualifying for badminton. Now that is a healthy looking carrot, but I'm gonna have to chop her up if I'm gonna persuade Jam to come over and talk to me in the field. But to answer that person who DM'd me, I mean, I did actually reply, but to answer it for everyone, Zero, Jam had not competed at any level because we actually bought her unseen from Ireland. She was a complete baby, she had done nothing. She was three and a half years old. And we ended up buying her from literally a 30 second clip of her trotting around this flooded arena and a couple of photos, which I'm gonna show to you guys because I don't know if you'll recognize the Jam then and the Jam we've got today. So before I show you, let me open the gate, but picture the scene, it's 2000 and, oh, gosh, when was it? Mum and I were looking for a Connemara mare to have a foal because we had had Ari the year before. We were so pleased with him. We wanted to use the same stallion. So we were looking for a purebred Connie to put in foal. It had to be around the kind of three, four age because we wanted to have a foal and then end up breaking them. I'm about to get attacked, bear with. Oh my word, Teddy. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy, no, no, leave. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> The pregnant mare, everybody, who is literally so spicy there. Leave me be. Leave. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Don't put a Welsh D in foal and let it have loads of time off, guys, because they become little biscuit coloured dragons. Did you know carrot stain? So a young purebred Connemara to put to Astral 53, the same sire that Ari is by. So we knew we wanted to buy something over from Ireland because it's always a little bit cheaper, at least it was pre-Brexit. So we were kind of looking out on various breeders sites or dealers sites that we kind of knew and trusted and everything was so expensive, way out of our budget. And we're just thinking, gosh, is this actually gonna happen? And then lo and behold, I see this video Now, you guys may be thinking, that's a bit of a haphazard video. Jam looks completely unruly, but there was something about her trot. She just had this massive expressive stride, and that doesn't necessarily come that naturally to Connemara's. So it really, really caught my eye. So we ended up inquiring about her. We had a few more pictures sent to us, and it turned out that she was one of the sort of cheaper ones that this woman happened to have. We don't know exactly why, Jam. I think it's because she didn't have any like fancy breeding and she was just a bit gangly. She didn't sort of look as smart as the other ones. So lo and behold, we did what everyone finds absolutely terrifying and we agreed to having this horse we had never met in person. 
imported from Ireland and sent over to our yard. And I must say, when Jam arrived, I was actually at university and I was so excited. I remember texting mum 24 seven, like, is she there yet, is she there yet? And she arrived and mum was like, hmm. <laughs> like, she doesn't look like she did in the video, like, looks like a different horse. Um, because she had just had this most bizarre growth spurt. And yeah, she, <laughs> she was all over the place. She was just funny looking because she'd grown in weird places. I mean, she's kind of sorted herself out now and they all do go through these growth spurts. She didn't look awful. She just kind of looked like two different horses. You want yummy up? We were really pleased with her because she was the sweetest little thing as she still is. So we went ahead with our plan. Good girl. And we put her in foal to Astral. But before we did that, I did have a tiny little play around with her. Mm, yummy. Um, just to kind of see what her sort of potential was. I loose jumped her over like little tiny fences. This is at my old yard, so you guys won't actually recognize it as much. Her back end definitely showed potential. That was kind of all that showed potential, bless her. To start with, she was literally <laughs> completely useless. She didn't have a clue, but obviously she'd never gone over a jump in her life, so it's unsurprising. Um, but she had a really, nice powerful back end that was something that always stuck out to me and even though she was messy in front she actually showed quite a lot of improvement in just one session and yeah the back end chef's kiss so i was like oh i'm excited for this girly once she's been broken Sorry, need more haylage to go and feed the ones down the bottom. So she went off to stud, she got in foal first time, which was incredible. And then it was just the waiting game. And 11 months later, this little bean popped out. Of course, the <laughs> gorgeous Winnie Woo, who I can see a lot of resemblance of oh, jam mainly the love for food. So we were actually really chuffed with how Winnie turned out. Jam was such a good mum. She was relaxed. I mean, she was good, but she was re relaxed. Winnie didn't receive that much discipline from her, which mm -hmm, maybe shows now, Winnie. You're quite a sassy little thing. But she was really sweet with her and Jam just absolutely loved her to pieces. And it really made Jam kind of mature and grow up, which is two things that you need to do, madam. seven months or so passed and it was time to wean Winnie and seeing as Jam had literally just been sat on in Ireland we figured let's send Jam away to the breakers get her broken in and it kind of solves the weaning problem as well so Jam went off the breakers and I was so excited to finally see what this horse that we'd had for about two years at this point was actually going to be like under saddle because obviously I just watched her in a field with her foal so I was so <laughs> this hate it back so excited to see what she was like and she was quite a diva surprisingly so because she's so good now but she was actually quite a sassy sassy one to break in <laughs> oh. 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 I think she's leaving her here. yeah do you fancy taking her around her first event <laughs> Like, look at me. <laughs> oh, good girl. She's like, yes, I did it. Yeah, Amanda, I think she'll be coming back here to do her first jumping under saddle. Oh, she's got a really sweet little jump. She says, I don't know if I like this rain as much. Like, but I was so good at it the other way. Let's just do it that way. She's 
so yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm a legend. Oh god, she's all whizzed up now. <laughs> Good girl, Jam. <laughs> yeah, you're on video. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even surprised actually. <laughs> I was having nightmares about having another green one. <laughs> She is as well, actually, though. <laughs> Four more to hay. We're getting there, guys. Honestly, winter and having to hay in the field at lunchtime. Not a vibe, not a vibe. We're just running really low on grass and we don't want the fields to get trashed. So I was just finishing uni at this point and I was so excited to have this new up and coming mare to ride. She was now five years old. Like she was a great age to just get going with. And my goodness, was it the biggest anti-climax Ever. Okay, so you guys are gonna think that sounds really harsh, but I kid you not, I have never ever in my history of producing young horses, and I've done a lot, like I've ridden a lot of young horses, I've never had one so slow to progress as little Jammy.
yeah, she's got quite a long stride, hasn't she? Good girl. Good girl. And I'm so glad I did push through it, but honestly, anyone out there that's currently working with a youngster and just banging their head against a wall, I feel you because Jam came back from the breakers and they had done the most incredible job, but she was still just so babyish, even though she was older than most youngsters kind of at that stage. So for a while, I just hacked her out and eventually I was like, come on, like we've got to get in the school, we've got to do some schooling now. And just, it was awful. Like every time I took her in the arena, it felt like we'd taken steps backwards. It was crazy. And it just took months and months and months. And there was a point where I just didn't bother taking her in the arena because she didn't enjoy it. And it just made me feel so deflated. Would you like a little bit of munchies? Brinny, please don't. Brinny, Brinny, I beg. Brinny, Brinny, what's this? Cool. <laughs> Just had to wipe the mud off the lens. No what it'd be roll of me putting hay out anyway, did they? What was that on my face? Anyway, like I was saying, it was it was not my favourite time trying to produce jam. That needs filling up. And for the remainder of that first year that I actually started riding her, to be perfectly honest with you, I was kind of just producing her to a point that I thought I could have someone come and ride her and sell her, to be honest, because it just felt like she didn't really have the potential I once thought she had. And I really felt like I was kind of wasting my time with her a bit. And then out of nowhere, it just seemed to click. And I don't know why I kind of doubted that it would because all youngsters do go through these phases where like, you're just like, oh my word, you're not progressing at all. But Jam, it was just so long. I'm not kidding you guys. And I'll put some pictures in and you'll think they're taken like in the same week because she just made no progress. But I promise they are taken months apart and it was just, so boring. Poor mum just had to listen to me complain after every schooling session because we just didn't make any improvements. Anyway, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. So if you're currently producing a youngster, 
keep going, your day will come where you're suddenly like, wow, this horse feels fantastic. And they, you can suddenly see the months of work you've put in. And that day came in the winter of 2020 and Jam just really knuckled down. I started jumping her in the arena at home and then eventually I got her out jumping at competitions. The difference between where she was in, say the February to where she was in November was astronomical. Like in those four months, is that four months? I'm pretty sure it's four months. She just changed so dramatically and she just kind of grew up. I forgot to mention that over the summer she did have numerous breaks because I was just like, my, my work here is not doing anything. Like I'm wasting my time and Jam's getting bored. But yeah, it did all pay off and she went out competing. I think it was in the February of 2020, maybe the January. That was kind of when I first got her out. We did a little combined training and she progressed really quickly then. She started at 70 or 80 and the next month she was going out and she did a riding club 90. So she did come on really quickly. And yes, it was still messy and ugly and not looking perfect. How's your water? Oh, they may as well have a top up. Hello, gorgeous. I'm telling everyone about the story of you. Yes, I am. So, <laughs> she's like, I've heard that story before. I don't need to listen to that, mum. So we were out show jumping and it was, oh, that's muddy. I literally just went in the water, right, I'll fill up the other side and then clean this out tomorrow. And obviously the event season was starting to creep up on us, as was COVID, spoilers. So I kind of bit the bullet, that's just flown straight out of here, there we go. And I entered her for her first ever event that, to be honest, like she wasn't, she wasn't that ready for it. We weren't polished or anything, but I do sometimes think with babies, once they get to a certain point, the best way for them to progress is to literally learn on the job. So I entered Swaycliffe, her first ever BE80, went with zero expectations. I don't even think we'd been proper cross-country schooling. I think I'd only cross-country schooled on a surface because the weather had been shocking. So we get there, it's super muddy. Mum doesn't want to do it. Mum's like, let's go home. It's right at the end of the second day. So it's like boggy. It's not the best conditions for a baby to go. But if we remember back to the video that I bought Jam from, she is made for those conditions and it actually really worked in our favour. Like she kept giving these massive jumps. I was just like, oh, you feel amazing. They said over the tannoy at one Oh, there's a big smile on Megan Elfrey's face. <laughs> I think I was crying after I got over the ditch, straight in the water. After all those, like, oh, God. she's a little jam, isn't she? Oh, damn it. Oh, I can't believe how amazing you've been. Jam won her first ever event. Like, it still makes me beam to this day because. I don't know, and just recalling how difficult it was schooling her and how deflated I felt. And I was just like, this horse is never gonna be an event horse, which is fine. But like, you know, it's deflating when you've kind of really built it up in your head. And this day completely and utterly proved me wrong. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. It made me so, so, so proud of her. And even today, just puts the biggest smile on my face if the camera adjusts the light. So after that, I progressed eventing as much as I could in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> I'm sure many of you all know that there was this little thing, it's called COVID-19, look it up if you've not heard of it, 
But 2020, it wasn't, it wasn't the year for eventing. Everything got canceled for months on end. So although that was Jam's first event season, she didn't do that many events. We did manage to get out to some 80s further along in the year. And they actually went really well. Like she was such a star. I'll pop up her results on the screen because I can't remember them off the top of my head. But she was probably one of the most successful youngsters I've ever produced in terms of like, if you're just looking at results, she had such a cracking first season of eventing. We interrupt this program with the news that this vlog is far too long. I cannot believe how much footage I have of Jam just trotting around looking like a donkey. Like I did not anticipate it being this long, but you know what? It's been such a blast from the past and just made me even prouder of her seeing how far she's come. Like to me, she's unrecognizable and I, I lived through all of that. So. For you guys, it must be quite eye-opening to see. So I have made the executive decision to make this a two-parter. So this one has obviously been unbroken to B80. And in two days time on Wednesday, you'll be seeing B80 to Badminton. And I have got a very special something up my sleeve for that video. There's gonna be some direct comparisons of some courses and it's very interesting. It really has given me a lot of hope for producing Ari, although he's not nearly as kind of wobbly as Jam was and he's younger. But yeah, it's made me realize just how far they come in quite a short amount of time, realistically. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to editing. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and comment. If you hit that subscribe button as well, it does seriously help a girl out to feed all of those hungry nine ponies out there. I will see you in two days time for part two. Live, love, love ya. Bye. my shoulder running off then. <laughs>